Then screen. There we go. Anyway, so we're going to talk about congruence. This is the uh, first bit of the unit five area. And so essentially, congruence, now that I've grabbed that, I don't want it. Uh, congruence allows us to show that these shapes are the same. Okay. So if I grab hold of this one, I can move it right around and looks like there's only one shape. And I can do that with any of these shapes given, you know, my fine motor skills. I can match them up almost exactly. And that's what is a measure of congruence. But I can take this pentagon right here and I can move it on top of this other pentagon and that would show that those two are congruent. Okay, and so there's going to be a couple ways that we're going to show congruence as we work our way through this uh, particular unit. I'm going to go back and grab my pen for a second. Pardon me for swapping back and forth. I probably need pen on each for the other thing. So when we have a triangle, and I'm going to call this original triangle, uh, I'm just going to call it J-O-N, okay? There's my original triangle. The triangle that we've translated or that we somehow are trying to match up, the image, we usually put a little primed after it. So it looks kind of like an apostrophe, but uh, we call it a prime in here in math world. So it's J primed, O primed, N primed. Okay, so that would be our, our translated triangle. So what we're trying to do is say, well, can we could we match this triangle, John, up to the other John, J primed, O primed, N primed, and I would hope you'd be able to see that that's, that we could do that. And so what we need to do is describe what sort of translation would we do to make these two triangles congruent. I think if I take J and I move it over one space, two space, three space, four space, five space, six space, seven space, eight space, nine spaces, I've matched it up. And if I just move J and the whole thing moves with it, I will have everything matched over. So my translation would be that to move to the right nine units. That's how I would match these up to prove that they would be congruent. Okay, if I wanted to prove that uh, this other John, and I'm going to go double primed, J double primed, double primed were the same, how might I get from this triangle here to that triangle there? What sort of movement would I need to do? So this one was to get from John to John. What sort of movement am I going to have to do to get from John to double John? Well, let's see. We move over. One space, two space, three space, four space, five spaces. Seems reasonable. And then we'd move down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we would go to the right, five units, and down. Did I say eight units? I hope so. Eight units. And that would allow these two to match up nicely with each other. And there we would have. Okay, so that's a translation. That's one way to prove the triangles are congruent. If I can translate them, if I can just slide it around, slide it up, down, left, right, then uh, and match them all up completely, then we have ourselves congruent triangles. The other things we can do is we can reflect, we can move them, we can you know like flip it over, over the over the line. So this one, this is my y-axis, and this is my x-axis. So uh, I don't know what are we going to call this one. Uh, I'll call it Ben, for lack of anything else. Okay, so there's Ben, and this becomes N primed, this becomes B primed, and this becomes E primed. So what do we have to need to do to be able to show that Ben is congruent to the other Ben, is congruent to its image? Well, what we did was we just flipped that triangle over the y-axis, right? And we can tell that we flipped it over the y-axis because if we look, we go one, two, three spaces to the y-axis, and then one, two, three spaces over to N. So all of these, if I counted from, from B to the axis and from B to the axis, it would be the same distance. It would go straight along the way. Okay, so to get from my original band to B primed, E primed, N primed, I reflect across the Y axis. Okay, if we want to look at to this other guy, uh, this is B double primed, N double primed, and it's the letter E double primed. Well, to get down to the x-axis, I went one, two, three. 
one, two, three. It doesn't always have to be three. I just happened to, for some reason, put them there. Um, so it's three this way and three that way. So that would be an indication that we've done some sort of reflection. And so to get from Ben to double Ben, I need to reflect across the x-axis. Is that right? Yeah, and so usually when we've done some sort of reflection, you'll notice that the letters have sort of reversed the order, uh, whereas when we went back to the translation, my letters stayed in the same place. They just kind of moved left, right. Uh, oh, we can reflect against about other things besides the x-axis. So if we have these two and it looks like we've got a reflection, I don't know what we're going to call this guy. We're just going to call him uh, Bill. Okay, so there's Bill. And Bill's reflection is over here, B primed, I primed, L prime. So we know we have a reflection because we've changed where things are. I totally messed that up, didn't I? Oh, hopefully you caught that. This isn't B primed. All right, we need an eraser. We need an eraser because we need to be a little precise. So let's make this better. Let's make that better. Let's go back, grab the pen, full screen. All right, so this is L primed here, and this is B primed there, right? Um, and so if we look, we can count the distance between the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So they're 8 apart, so the place where, they, uh, where we're reflected has to be halfway between 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, so it's 4 to this line right there, and it's 4 to that line right there. And so the total is 8 divided by 2. And so this line that we reflected about is an x equals line, and that's x equals 2. So we just did a reflection about x equals 2. Okay, we could also do a reflection about a y value. So we just want to look and see where how far apart the corresponding parts are, and if it's an equal, you know, we can find the line in between. Okay, so there's reflections. And the last one that we would do is we'll do uh, some rotations. And so I'm going to label these, this guy here. I've just run out of names that start with, uh, that have three letters. So, oh, okay, we'll go with this one. Deb. Okay, so Deb, the triangle, and we're going to need the pointer because I'm just going to move things around a little bit. Apologize for going in and out of large space, but, you know. You're paying attention anyway. So if I'm going to rotate, what we do is we rotate about the origin. Everything spins about the origin. So just picture, we just pick this thing up. If you turn your head like so, picture where it would be. So point D is going to show up over, let's see, so right now it's back 3 and up 4. So it's going to be over 4 and up 3. So it's going to show up about there. Okay, when we we'll rotate. So I'm going to grab this guy here. I'm going to rotate it, kind of. Best I can. And then I'm going to move it into position. So what do we say? We need to be over four and up three. So I'm over one, two, three, four, and up one, two, three. So that would be the new position of Deb if I just rotated at 90 degrees. Okay. So write that rotation of 90 degrees. Point D is here. Point E is there. Point B is there. Okay. 90 degree rotation about the origin. We just take and spin this thing. Am I right, please? Is that right where I want to be? Four over one, two, three, four, one, three. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, we can also rotate 180 degrees. So if I rotate something 180 degrees, it basically turns upside down, right? And so I'm just spinning it. And so now I'm looking at, well, let's see, where is uh, where is this point D going to be? Well, I think, let's see if I can just spot it in here. It's going to be down here, and it's going to be 3 over and 4 down-ish. Not like that. So then I've taken that, that triangle, and I've just rotated it 180 degrees. Turn it upside down on its head. So if I were to be able to rotate this triangle 180 degrees, I would have that triangle. We would show that they're congruent. If I rotate this one 90 degrees, I'd have this triangle show that they're congruent. Okay, that's what congruence is about. If I can take two shapes and I can transform them so that uh, one of them moves exactly onto the other, exactly, so everything matches up, then I have myself two shapes that are congruent. So two shapes are congruent. If one shape can be transformed exactly onto the other, and we say transform, we're talking about translations, we're talking about reflections, we're talking about rotations. Okay?
that's about it. We'll give you some practice uh, doing some transformations and figuring out what transformations are going to make things uh, the way we want them to be, which is congruent. Hey, thanks for watching. We uh, hope you learned something. Talk to you real soon now. Bye-bye.